The second phase is the evaluation phase. Um, it, what, what, what do you need to evaluate? You know, after you've already you know, sort of identified options after you've gone through the process. You need to identify three things pretty broadly in my view. Um, the most clear is the property itself, right? The facility. As you're doing the physical property inspections, it's not just, you know, how good does the space look, you know, that's sort of in the, in the cultural category and how well is it laid out, but it's also, um, you know, do you have the power that, that you're going to need? You know, what dedicated outlets are you know, just focusing on just office space? Clearly, as the requirement becomes more technical and we start talking about, you know, lab or data center or something like that, you know, the, the, the needs and the, the, the evaluation is even more critical. But let's just talk about office space for a moment. Um, you know, dedicated outlets, you know, supplemental HVAC, uh, you know, distance to the nearest wet stack for a kitchen or for, for a restroom. You know, all these things should be a part of what fiber is in the building. You know, what's the cabling, uh, you know, is that viable? Um, all these things are part of your evaluation of the physical facility. Also, uh, often overlooked just as an example, is, is the building uh, ADA compliant? You do so much as just put up a wall you're changing fire life, fire, fire life safety, egress, you may be required to get a permit, and the county, almost any jurisdiction in the area, can hold that permit up in, unless you make the, something like the bathrooms or the common areas more ADA compliant. Things like a five foot turning radius in the bathroom or, or levers instead of knobs, things like that, uh, you may be required to do. Well, you didn't identify it early on in the process during your evaluation, so you didn't negotiate it, so the landlord's not going to want to pay for it. So you end up spending more money uh, on your facility than what you, what you need to. Uh, what's another thing that you need to evaluate you know, these days as an end user or a potential tenant or an existing tenant? Your landlord, right? Everything you're hearing in the news is absolutely right. Uh, a whole lot of real estate in this area, and certainly others, but even in this area, uh, was built, bought, or refinanced in the last five years. A whole lot of it, maybe even a majority of it, is in technical default. What that means is the landlords are still making their payments on their debt service. However, they've exceeded their loan to value threshold. The value of the real estate has dropped. Um, they aren't meeting their debt coverage ratios. They're not bringing in as much revenue to, to cover the debt service. So the, the basis on which the lender lent the money uh, it is not is, is not the same. Um, the, the asset is basically not performed. What does that mean? It means the lender can foreclose on the landlord. You know why aren't lenders doing that right now? Well, lenders don't want to recognize the loss, right? No, no one do the securities market. They don't want to recognize the loss. Um, you know they'd rather just continue to show profits. However, at some point, if the market does not improve or Health doesn't get significantly expanded. At some point, um, landlords are going to realize they're putting good money after bad. You know, they've lost their equity. The returns, the rents have dropped. The returns are so thin. Why am I continuing to pay on my debt service and not have that much uh, possibility for a return on this asset? So we're starting to see buildings, commercial investment buildings of all types, go back to the landlords. Um, in some cases right now, lenders are extending the debt. We call it pretend and extend a lot of times because the lender is assuming that demand will come back or the credit markets free up because of some government action and you know, they let the landlord continue paying the debt service even after the term of the loan may have expired. Um, they'll do some type of restructure and just sort of hope that everything sort of works itself out. Um, that's not going to happen entirely amongst the market. The extent of how many uh, buildings go back to, to the lenders is yet to be seen, but we are going to see that happening more and more. What does all this mean to you? you know, why, why do you care you know, what happens to the landlord? Because your lease as a tenant, whether you're an existing tenant or you know, a prospective tenant, is subordinate to the lien of the mortgagee. What in the world does that mean? It means that you have no lease if the building is foreclosed upon, if it goes back to the lender without adequate non-disturbance protection. And that's a critical component of a lease negotiation early on, ideally a proposal negotiation, but it's also important in the evaluation uh, portion of the process. 
uh, because the extent to which you can secure an SNDA, for example, is dependent on you know the leverage that you have. Uh, but the extent to which you need it is dependent on you know the landlords that you're that you're interacting with. Um, so it's a very important part of the process, uh, the evaluation process, not just evaluating the property, but evaluating the landlords. The third thing that you need to evaluate as a part of this process is uh, you know the actual proposals, the terms of the deal, and you know landlords are are, are well trained to uh, focus proposals, offers, whatever you want to call them, on what I would argue to be less important, more obvious factors, uh, such as the rent, uh, lease term, things that you're going to think about anyway, and then focus the rest on you know how wonderful the building is and, and everything like that, or the site, or what have you. Uh, then they keep everything else that I would argue in some cases is more important out of sight and out of mind. Things like expansion and contraction rights, things like uh, protection from a landlord's default, um, things like other, other rights that may exist, you know, it could be parking, it could be signage, ADA compliance, um, other items related to the build out of the space and future alterations. In my view, you have the most leverage as a tenant before you've committed to going to a lease with the landlord. So as part of your evaluation and, and proposal negotiation, you want to put as much as you possibly can as you're countering and developing the letter of intent with that landlord before you've committed to them psychologically, if nothing else, and gone further up against your, your timeline because the landlords know it. You're busy, you're doing other things, your business isn't real estate. You're, you know, as time goes by, you lose leverage. Uh, typically, in most situations, because even if you're in an incubator situation, you're, you're growing out of it. You know, there's something that's driving you out of the incubator. It's because you just got funding. It's because you just got a contract. It's some some type of growth, and you need the facility to accommodate it. And landlords know that they're in the business, and, and, and they're patient.